You're live. We're live? Okay. All right. Hey guys, I wanted to show you this installation of a curbless shower system using the Schluter shower system. So we're going to go ahead and demonstrate installing the pan. I'm going to go over a bunch of tips and different things about the setup of this and just things to look out for. So we're going to be here for a while. I started a little bit earlier. I notified everybody 12 o'clock, but uh, we're here a little bit early. So be sure to ask me any questions as I'm going through this process. And hey, remember, give me a like if you can when you first come in on here. This really helps out my channel, gets that this video out here. And leave a comment below if you're watching this later. And if you want to speed things up, hit that three dot 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 buttons above your screen. You can fast forward this, go to 2x so you don't have to waste your time watching me thin set and things. So uh, make sure you use the tools on YouTube to help you out. So we'll get started here. Um, what I already had done was cut my pan to size. So this was a 38 by 60 inch pan. That's what the, 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 the normal size for, this is basically, just to remember, this was a tub. So this was a five foot tub area and we're converting it to a shower. So the pans that fit this size, there's many different size pans that Schluter makes, but this particular one is 38 by 60. So I had to cut it down width ways and length ways um, on this. Now the other thing that I already had done was use the Schluter membrane and uh, mainly that was because of the shortage of curdy board right now. Typically I like to use the half inch curdy board, which is a foam board. It makes it really simple, but the next best option is literally just to drywall the shower and then use their thin membrane that you basically hang like wallpaper. But you always want to have all your walls waterproof first before moving on to the pan. And the main reason is, is that you don't want to be walking all over this pan. It is made out of foam. Um, so with your boots and, I mean, there's really no sense in making a big mess over this pan while you're uh, doing the walls. But it's usually best to do all the walls first and then cut your pan to fit neatly to it. Um, one thing that really is nice about Schluter though, is that you can cut this pan and modify it to how you want it to fit in your space. Um, but if you have any, it, it, what, what's, what's great about it is it's very versatile. So you could be a half inch off of your cut and it's not a big deal. Like it's a very user friendly uh, system when it comes to accuracy because all they're doing after you set the pan is just using their corner tape. This is basic, this is called curdy membrane and it's just a five inch band that you're gonna fold in the corners. So if you miscut and you had like a three quarter inch gap, not a big deal, just fill it up with thin set and then you're gonna be taping the corners all the way around. So in that aspect, it's really nice. The drain location is also allows you, there's a plenty of flexibility within this space, which is really nice. Um, a lot of other systems, I mean, you have to be spot on to make them work. Whereas this one, you could be a half inch off your measurement and still be able to get your drain to fit in properly. Properly. Now, I mean, obviously accuracy comes with time. The more you do this stuff, the more accurate you become, the more precise you can be. So that's why I do recommend the Schluter system for, you know, somebody who's new to this, who doesn't do it all the time. Maybe it's their first time. I don't know, but it, it definitely gives you some flexibility. And, you know, the pans are already pretty sloped to the drain, quarter inch per foot. So there's no guesswork with having to actually form a mud bed. Um, so that makes it really easy and really the pans really aren't that expensive i mean the pan was uh what 130 bucks and then your drain was like another 100 bucks uh, and you have to get the drain cover as well so it, it adds up um, as you get the components but this whole shower doing the membrane over the drywall uh, is literally going to be around 700 dollars. so that's really not bad for a curbless shower system um, because a lot of the pan systems that are curbless you know, they start out at $1,000 in a lot of the different systems. So um, anyways, let's go ahead and get pull this out. Like I said, I already have this fit. Everything's fairly tight. Um, it's not too tight, but it's, you know, within, uh, you know, a quarter inch all the way around the perimeter of the, the shower pan. Now I did not glue my two inch drain in. Uh, I'll show you why I didn't do that. I'm gonna do this after I set this pan. I just find it to be easier to cut the riser pipe after you have this all set. Okay, so 
first thing I need to explain to you is, is, is why is this recessed? So these are my existing joists here. And what I did was just remove the plywood in this entire area. And I basically put blockers, two by four blockers, three quarters inch below my joists. And then I basically just put plywood in between them. So basically making all my plywood flush with the top of my joists. Now, these bigger pans, these, these 38 by 60 pans, they're an inch and an eighth thick. So that's not exactly um, going to even up with three quarter inch plywood. So what I did was I added quarter inch strips on top of the joist on the outside of the floor and I, I put all new plywood in. So if you had an existing floor, the way that you would deal with this extra quarter inch is you can use a thicker Dietra mat, um, which is basically a waterproof mat that would raise the outside floor, or you can use floor leveler. That's not, you can floor level your whole outside floor. Um, but the simplest way, and, and the main reason I replaced all of this plywood is because I had to refinagle all of my plumbing in this bathroom. The floor was in a real bad shape, so I had to really replace it anyways. Um, so it made it easier just to add quarter inch strips on top of these joists, but just know that in a shower, you know, a 30 inch by 60 inch shower with the Schluter system, you're going to have to raise that floor um, a quarter inch or more to meet up with this. So I'll get into more detail like that. I'll definitely be having some more videos on my channel uh, addressing on how to do this. I do have one already on there where I used floor leveler, floor leveler to match up with a curbless shower. So definitely check that out um, on my channel here. So, so the first thing is um, you wanna thin set this down. Uh, and it's a good idea to get a level out and just reference, make sure that things are level because everything on these systems are gonna somewhat require a fairly level floor. Um, I would say anything within a quarter inch. If you're over a quarter inch out in any fashion, you're gonna to wanna to address uh, the framing and make this level. Um, so, and there's a couple ways you could do that. I mean, you could floor level or after you get this plywood in like this, I could floor level this area if I was like really low in one corner. Um, and then, but really the ultimate way would have been when I ran all this plywood, it's just to raise my blockers up to make it all level. So like the, I had basically two by four scabbed onto the side of the joist and I could have just raised it a little bit on one side or the other so that my plywood um, could be level all the way across. So in other words, make sure that you're, you're fairly level um, within, within reason. A quarter inch is pretty much within reason in a five foot space. And then you're gonna wanna use a quarter inch by three eighths inch square notch trowel for setting the tray. I already have some thin set mixed up. And this is, I used Schluter's All Set. It's a modified thin set. Over plywood, you wanna use a modified thin set. So if you, if you don't have the availability to get the Schluter All Set, get, get some form of modified thin set. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just take a damp sponge, wipe down the surface, and this just gets all the dust off, but it also keeps this thin set from wicking into the plywood immediately. Okay, so this is uh, basically the thin set is, is made for the membranes, so it's a fairly loose consistency because right after I set the pan, I'm going to start using the banding that go around it. But the first step is just to get this thin set applied properly. You want to use the flat side of your trowel to burn the thin set into the substrate. This will do two things. It first helps get a good nice trowel line, but also it just makes sure that you have this thin set well bonded to the actual substrate. And you want to do this on any type of towel installation on the floor. Just always use the back side of your trowel and just, just work it into the substrate. Directional troweling. Okay.
these lines, all these trowel lines in the same direction. And that's the main reason for doing this, and this is for any tile installation, is that you have these all in the same line. Basically, once you set the pan, it allows the thin set to collapse and then all the air escapes. If you're doing like swirl patterns, there's no way for that air to escape properly. So you always want to have everything in the same direction. Okay, so that's pretty, pretty straightforward, easy there. I'm going to set our pan. Okay, then you can even see here, I'm pretty much even with the plywood, but I'm just that, that extra quarter inch above. Um, and it's mainly on the outside areas. So basically what happens when you cut down a pan is that when the pan comes, when you first get the pan, all edges of the perimeter are the same exact height. So there will be one, an inch and an eighth all the way around. But when you cut it narrowly, like this, what you'll end up is with a less of a thickness right in the center of the shower, and then you'll, you'll, you'll taper up to that inch and an eighth, basically. It's not a huge problem to overcome when you're installing tile. Um, when you do a curbless shower, I always recommend that you do the outside floor first, so then you can build up your tile and meet with that outside floor. Most of the time, the outside floor you're gonna be using bigger tile these days. I mean, you might not, you might wanna just do all mosaics, but majority of people now are doing 12 by 20 floors or bigger on the outside floor. So you use a lot more thin set underneath of that and that'll raise the height, uh, you know, not a bunch, but a quarter inch anyways. So when you're using your mosaic tile, like a two by two, you need to be, um, you know, you wanna meet that up so everything's nice and flush with the outside floor. So all I'm saying is that this tapered edge here that is a little bit slightly lower here than the outside, you can make that up very easily when you're actually tiling the pan. Okay, so we got the pan set. That was a pretty simple process. Now we'll just go ahead and get our PVC drain. We're getting PVC drain because we have PVC piping here. And what this will come with with our corners it comes with a manual to show you all the instructions it has a pipe seal but in this particular situation it's not going to work with the type of valve we have but uh, these are great for traditional mixing valves um, and it also comes with a pipe seal so this would be for like your port or your shower head it only comes with one so if you have a handheld you'll have to get, purchase an additional one and then it also comes with these foam blocks so these flung blocks are primarily used to space this off the floor. So they, they just basically have little grooves here and then you just put four on either side. So this is kind of, if you had a plumber come out and install this, because he's going to probably want to have the actual drain assembly glued to his actual um, piping, then that's where you would have him use these spacers so that you have enough room to put this out. But in this circumstance, I find it to be easiest just to put the pan in first, measure down, and then set it in place. So you won't need these foam spacers unless you're having somebody else set the drain for you. Okay, so then I just basically stick my pipe in the into my trap. Now, this is dry fitting. Remember that when you dry fit plumbing, you always, you typically can't get it to completely go all the way down to the hub of your fitting. It usually goes down like another sixteenth or an eighth of an inch, um, just because once it's glued together, it, it can really be pushed together. So know that you're going to have a little bit more distance that you're measuring, meaning that your riser pipe should be a little bit shorter than what this measurement will be. And I'm not saying much. I, I would probably just give yourself maybe an eighth inch at most. So. 
So you just, and plus we're gonna have a little bit of thin set around here because you wanna thin set this flange in. So, um, you know, just take this measurement uh, and I would probably just, you know, most of the time I just cut it at that measurement because the thin set layer and then the additional piping that comes together um, will do. But so anyways, and so we got nine and seven eighths. So I'm gonna cut nine and seven eighths off of this pipe. And honestly, well, that's, it's gonna be easier to cut outside the pipe. So, you know I'm gonna get a square cut on this first before I even measure it. That's one thing I should have paid attention to was whether this was square. I always use a chop saw and cut this. Sorry, this is gonna be loud. But this is, um, this is the best way to go about this is just to cut it with a, a chop saw. <laughs> Seven and seven eighths. Okay. Now we'll just measure down seven and seven eighths. That's what we want to cut it off. There's a little bit of balance here. That's good because I need a little bit more room to thin set underneath of this. And once I glue it, it'll really go into place here. So. So that really ended up with a riser pipe of two and three quarter. The other way you can do this, honestly, too, just put your your flange in there and measure down to your hub. So yeah, three inches and we're at two and three quarter. So, I mean, I, there's two ways you can do it. You can definitely measure down into this. In some ways that might be a little bit more accurate, but I do it either way, it doesn't really matter. set all the way around this flange. Just build this up because you want to basically allow this flange member, this basically this whole thing just be filled with thin set. 
So be generous with around the drain here. fitting on their flange. Twisting motion. Just hold that knot for a couple of seconds. Okay. So you can see how much excess stencil I have on here. end up happening a little bit is that your your flange might pop up if that happens it's not a, I'll show you here in a second what to do with that because it, it, it ends up being a common problem when you when you glue that in I'll show you here in a minute set it down. So if any of you are contractors watching this, I do highly recommend you go to the Schluter workshops that they have. Um, if you just look up, if you go to schluter.com, they have a bunch of these conferences that you can schedule and go. And it's like a two day event. And it just goes over everything about all of their products. You know, they can even get to, to, to do a, um, an actual installation of their products, ask any questions you may have. Really great resource. They give you lunch. If you're out of state, they pay for you to come there and stay over. You'll just learn an, an enormous amount. You learn a lot about setting tile. Well, not setting tile, but all their stuff, their products. Um, and one of the things that they really do explain to you is like how in the world is this waterproof when you're using thin set? It really kind of in some ways doesn't make sense. And I certainly didn't understand it when I first was putting it together. Like how how is thin setting the membrane together actually going to make this waterproof? Well, and what keeps the water from working its way through the thin set between the flange and the fabric? Exactly. That's exactly the confusing part of what. Like how does that work? What what what? what what scenario would thin set be a waterproof material? Well, the answer is is that the, the membrane that they have, so the, you have to get this down, this is like a science level stuff, I guess, but basically the, the molecules of the thin set harden so much around this fleece, the fleece kind of, um, it's a microscopic level that you have to look at this and they'll, they'll go over that type of thing, but basically this infuses itself into the thin set 
like with little fibers of this uh, membrane and then it turns super hard and then water can't penetrate between the, the, the layers of the uh, curdy membrane. That's why they require you on every single seam to at least have two inches of overlap. Um, and then, you know, then the, the water will not be able to penetrate between that. And it's basically because of this, this fleece kind of embeds itself into that thin set. That's the way it was explained to me. Um, but, you know, when you flood test things and you see how this stuff works, it, I mean, it definitely is waterproof um, to a certain extent. You're not going to be able to use this stuff and just um, have a bathtub made out of this stuff. It's not meant for, I mean, the whole Schluter system is not meant to hold water. You're not, it's not meant to just hold water indefinitely. It's, it's made for, um, you know, the water to escape the system and it will be waterproof up to that point. So if you were doing something like, I don't know, something really, really crazy custom made where, you know, water might be actually sitting in the area for a long time, you would have to do some kind of liquid waterproofing material over top of it or just go with a whole different system altogether. But for showering systems, you know, the water is never supposed to be sitting anywhere. It's supposed to eventually drain out, and that's basically how that works. Did you ever demo a failed Schluter system? I have not. Um, I have not. I mean, okay, so if that, if that drain pops off just slightly, I would just use something that would allow you to, like what, a zip pull or some kind of, like this is my laser jam basically. So I'm just putting pressure down onto that flange, and then once that thing set sets up, it'll be it'll be you know, it'll be fastened well to that. Um, no, I have not. I have not had a, a shooter failure. The, all the failures end up happening of, of, of hearing the actual fleas. So if your thin set is not fluid, I mean this is fairly fluid. I would not set tile with this fluid um, of thin set. But it, a lot of times guys are mixing things too thick and then it doesn't bond properly to the fleece. So that's where you end up with problems with the Dieter mat or the Schluter membrane. It all usually revolves around the thin set mixture. So my best advice is that any thin set that you use, just mix it to the wettest ratio that it says on the bag. So Schluter all set, it's eight and a half quarts of water per bag. And that, that'll give you this, you know, really fluid consistency. Um, but that's usually where the problems arise. Other than that, like, you know, their drains are fantastic. Because, you know, when you look at this, everything is waterproof right underneath that tile layer. So versus the old systems where there would be rubber liners, like that whole mud bed would get saturated with water and then, then drain out. And that's where when... That's why there's so many problems with those old systems. I've torn out many rubber liner systems that are not working properly or where the tile always looks wet around the drain, never dries out or you smell mildew and stuff like that. And the main reason was because the water is not able to escape. There's a problem with the weed pull system. Um, you know, either somebody didn't do a pre-slope underneath the rubber liner to make everything drain. That's, you, that's very common. A lot of guys, I mean, I see a lot of plumbers just sticking it right over the flat plywood and then they expect you to just do the mortar bed and that's sufficient. That's not sufficient. It needs to be all sloped to the drain, the rubber liner, because the whole way that that system works is if water gets underneath the tile, it goes down to the rubber liner and then it exits the system. So even if you were to do a rubber liner, I would recommend doing at least the Schluter drain so that all the waterproofing is topical. So then right underneath that tile layer, the water's escaping and, and, and leaving the system. Okay, so got that set. This will just set for you know probably the, the perimeter the rest of the day, just holding that flange down. Um, but this fleece right here, it's just really important to make sure that it's all really well bonded to the actual flange, because um, that's really where the main avenue of it staying waterproof is having this fleece being bonded to the actual bonding flange of the Schluter pan. So we'll, 
take a couple minutes here um, because I got to put the Deidre mat outside of this. Um, so I got to move this stuff out of here and, and uh, set that down. And then we'll go into taping the corners and get everything set up because it's really important on a curbless shower. In my mind, is that the entire bathroom floor is uh, waterproof, but at the very least, just having it three feet outside of the shower. There's many, many curbless showers that I've seen where the plywood is all kind of rotten right outside of the floor area. And there's a good reason um, for why that can happen. And a lot of it comes through capillary water movement, um, which is helped by the thin set layer. So water gets underneath the tile and then the thin set wants to draw the water out of it because it's wicking into the thin set layer and then pulling that water outside of the shower area. So when I get into the tiling scenario, I'll definitely be um, pointing out a way to eliminate that problem. And it's basically just separating the thin set layer. So when you tile here, you can just seal the tile to the membrane and then that will like at least create a void between the waterproof material on the inside and the outside and, and separating that thin set layer so that the thin set can't pull the water outside of the shower area. You can also have a problem if your outside floor isn't level. Say for instance, say if you didn't raise this up this other quarter inch and you just put a membrane right over this the way it is right now, that means that outside of here is lower than right here. So having that, you know, it's just like putting a hose in here, siphoning your water out. So once enough of a water flow gets siphoned through that thin set layer, you could just keep pulling water out of that shower area. And it's not going to be a lot. It's just going to accumulate every day. If you're taking a shower every single day, multiple showers a day, you know, that adds up and then it becomes a problem. So it's not like it happens all at once. It usually, you end up having air problems three months down the line. Um, and I'm saying this from experience because I've had some curbless shower systems that had not necessarily failed in the pan itself, but where there was water underneath the tile outside of the floor. And it seemed impossible that could happen, but it can. And the main reason is, is if the water's not escaping underneath of this tile and you're getting build up of water in that, in that system, it's just going to go to the lowest point. And then once it starts, once it gets an avenue of how to do that, it'll just keep pulling it out of the shower and then you'll end up with water on the outside of your shower. So I hope I explained that well enough. I can get into more details on that on a more pointed video. But it's just something you really have to pay attention to with the curbless showers. If you have a curb shower, no issues there. You have basically a four inch wall that you're preventing anything from coming over. Yeah, but I'm really excited to do just demonstrate this arch niche. This is going to be a really cool feature to the back of the shower. Basically, I'm just going to be putting a shelf in the center. But um, I have a real great way to tile this that makes it much faster and easier. So I'll be definitely keep an eye on that for that feature. I'll be doing that in the next couple of days here. I did put my floor drain in for my uh, shut my toilet. One thing you want to pay attention to though when you're when you're designing a bathroom or you're figuring out what you're doing is you want to make sure that this is 15 inches away from any fixture. So I had to make sure that my toilet flange on the center was going to be 15 inches away from the edge of my shower. That, that meets code basically in the base. The whole reason is once I put a shower door in here, if it's any closer to that, you're going to have like no elbow room sitting on this. So, um, you know, then obviously just 12 inches away from your wall. If you're doing a, a typical, most toilets are 12 inch rough ends. So you just want to make sure that you're, you're 12 inches, but I did set my flange down. Um, basically I'm going to be waterproofing around this 
and then after my tile I'll just use an extension ring to get this even with the tile layer. I always, in most toilet installations, um, they're going to say you can be a quarter inch below, even, or a quarter inch above uh, the tile layer. If it's anything more than that, um, you can end up being having problems and you definitely don't want to be doing a double wax ring or, or filling that. So the proper way would be definitely to use a, an extension ring to bring it up to the tile layer. Somebody had a question about the archway. Yeah. Could you ease, could you do that with Weedy instead of Schluter easily? Absolutely. Yeah, in a lot of ways the, uh, the, the Weedy system would have been, yeah, no doubt, it would have been easier. All these cameras around here. Um, yeah, we would have been actually much easier all the way around because you're just using the ceiling in between the boards, and um, it still would have been it still would have been challenging. You still have to cut basically to do that archway. You have to take. I use always use a square on like a, a speed square on the back of the piece. So if you cut a three and a half inch deep piece and you just make score marks every half inch all the way down and then you snap it and you let it allows it to to create that curve so um yeah i mean if you did weedy i would definitely probably purchase another tube of sealant for sure to just smooth that whole thing out but yeah that would have been no doubt that would have been easier to install i always found that weedy um waterproofing panels were easier to install than the schluter it's just a lot more expensive. I mean, this whole roll of Curdy, I think it was 130 bucks. I mean, I would have gotten three sheets of Weedy for that. So I would have had, I would have been double the cost to do Weedy. Um, but I am a big fan of it. I use it all the time as well. Uh, it's just in this particular situation. The reason I went with the Schluter on this one is because I, I didn't come out here a second or third time to make sure I can evaluate where my drain could be. Um, because if you did the Schluter, the Weedy shower system, um, it has to be accurate. Like everything has to be within a quarter inch as far as, you know, where, where your drain location is or it's not going to work. So, um, you know, a lot of times when I don't take the time to really evaluate how my plumbing is going to work with it, I just go with Schluter because I know I can make it work. Whereas Weedy, um, you know, if there was a joist, if there was a joist like right here, I'd be screwed. I wouldn't be. I would have to get a bigger weedy pan to make that work, so that you can cut the pan down. But that can be really expensive. I mean, a, a 36 by 60 inch weedy pan, I believe, is around 968 dollars. Uh, the next one up to that would would be like a five by five pan or something. Um, you know, it's probably twelve, thirteen hundred dollars, three hundred dollars difference. So I wasn't gonna, I wasn't willing to spend that extra three hundred dollars just because I didn't know where my drain was. Whereas the Schluter just made it easier for me because I have so much flexibility with it. What about the <clears throat> the weedy cement? Would it break up on you a lot if you were trying to create an archway? It would. Uh, no, well, I'm trying to think. No, not really. I mean, because it still has its like like actual membrane behind it. Um, it might be a little bit rougher, yeah. It might be a little bit rougher overall. Because the, the, the Curdy board is really um, almost flexible a little bit. That's why a lot of, some guys don't like it at all because of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, even this though, I mean, this looks round, but it really wasn't round even with the Curdy board. It was, you know, it was semi-round. That's where it might be, you know, if you had an extra tube of sealant you can just after you get the board up just you know smooth it out with a putty knife <laughs> you know there's no reason you can't do that so that might be a, um, one real easy solution I mean yeah the curdy membrane is kind of a pain when you do it like this because I had to cut these little little pieces all the way around to be able to waterproof it so
Yeah, but the weedy, the weedy curbless system, though, um, it's three quarters of an inch thick. So you, you can literally just take out that plywood and set it in, and it's really easy. So in that aspect, it's pretty nice because there's not too many other systems. Uh, most of them these days are about an inch or seven eighths, like the, uh, the Vim shower pan, which is um, kind of like a composite ABS material. It's like seven eighths. So all of them have a little bit of an issue with the height, but the weedy is the, the best when it comes out because it's three quarters of an inch as it comes. All right, so we're gonna layer a deep tree down. This is gonna basically waterproof our outside floor here. Like I said, I really highly recommend you waterproof the entire outside floor, especially in a smaller bathroom like this. You don't want to be, um, you don't want to be skipping on the waterproofing when it comes to a curb shop. <laughs> Do your customers ever look at you funny when all the cameras and lights come out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. It's, uh, it looks like a studio, for sure. <laughs> so this is going to give us our extra uh, eighth inch to meet up with this pan nicely. And that was after adding some quarter inch strips to those joists. Because the, the 38 by 60 inch pan is, is an inch and eight thick. So you have to overcome that thickness to have this meet up nicely. Cut this here. Okay, so for the deep tray heat mat, you're just using a 3 16th inch by 3 16th inch square notch trowel. Um, they do make a trowel for that deep tray, a deep tray trowel, but that's all it is, it's just a 3 16th inch notch trowel. And again, your first step to any tile installation or anything you're doing is just to wipe down the substrate the damp sponge and it helps prevent this from wicking the thin set layer you know it doesn't wick straight into this plywood you want to give it a little bit of moisture just to keep that from happening plus it gives you a chance to really wipe off the area and then the most important thing that you can do when you're doing this scooter anything scooter is just making sure that you have the right Consistency and thin set. This is very fluid. Um, so, the wettest ratio that you can have over plywood, you want it to be modified thin set. Uh, majority of the thin sets you get at the box stores are going to be modified. You might even have a hard time getting the unmodified stuff. Um, but I always just go with the Schluter All Set. That's what this is. Um, Schluter makes their own thin sets. So, you know, to me, it makes sense. They're, they're making it for the system. It's only I mean, it's a little expensive. I mean, I think it's 35 bucks a bag or something. But peace of mind with knowing that the system is going to be warranted is a good thing, too. So you use the back side of your trowel to burn it into the substrate first. This will help you get those ridge lines all nice and even and also make sure it's well bonded. bathroom I you know it does get kind of costly but you really do need to have a nice size trials for this stuff that bond nicely uh, so you got too much and you get you get a bunch of different bubbles underneath of there and, and then if obviously it's too small then you're not getting enough things that are underneath of it so, typical bathroom you're gonna need at least three different size trowels. All right, so they, they say that you, they want you to have a quarter inch of reveal around the perimeter of the room for expansion and contraction. And I just use this wood float. So then we'll just cut out this inch. So 
Somebody said it's a good idea to look on eBay for uh, cheap used trowel. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, it does add up though. I mean, you know, I mean, a feature trowel. It's nice to have just a feature trowel and you just grab it. You don't have to think about what it is. But I mean, those things aren't cheap. I mean, you can get into a couple hundred dollars worth of trials just to do one bath one. That's a lot of money. There. That's all you have to do. Okay, so it's always a good idea to pull this up. Make sure you got good coverage. Um, it's all pretty good. I'm just going to get a little bit more right at this corner because I don't have that. But basically, you, just want to, you want to avoid any major bald, bald spots or anything. But you know, it's a good idea to always pull this up and check in areas. Get a good grinder blade and you've got a good sliding cutter you really don't need a wet saw most of the wet saw work that i do is basically just like l cuts around a niche um, or if it's just something else that's really intricate like i mean i like it for subway tile it's nice to have a wet saw because you can cut multiple pieces all at once um, but you'll find once you get a really good grinder blade um, you know, you can pretty much do most of your towel work with that pretty accurately. Um, and I always just use Montelit. Uh, Montelit just makes some really great stuff, but they've got some really great grinder blades. They've got an STL blade, which is kind of like a grinder blade and a cutter blade. So it, you know, allows you to back cut things really easy, cut holes in the tile. I mean, they're expensive, they're 130 bucks, so it's not cheap, but. I'm just saying, you don't always need a, a wet saw to do this stuff. You know, it depends on the pattern that you're installing to, you know. I mean, but to keep it somewhat simple, it shouldn't be that much time to do. Actually, I'm listening to my own advice here. Burn it in first. Watching this later, you can fast forward this up by 2xing the speed. You know, a lot of people don't do that on a lot of things, but something like this allows you to get through it quicker. properly if you think if you mix it too thick you're not going to get a good bond it just, it just won't happen so make sure that you're you know and, and just to let you know that, and this is a, a five by ten bathroom so with setting the pan and setting this membrane it basically makes a half a bucket of thin set at that wettest rate ratio so you're not really you know it's best to try to mix things at the the full bag so that you can have the proper ratio but uh you know, for something like this, yeah, literally half a bag will do all of this. Okay, 
How big of a sin is it to use regular modified thin set over Dutra? It's really not that big of a sin. I like that because I tell you what, that, that has been the biggest argument over all these years. You know, you can't use unmodified over this. And, and they have a lot of great points of why they come up with that, Schluter, I'm specifically saying. But what's funny is that they come up with this all set that's modified. So, I mean, they're going to just claim it's their own science, and that's why they can use it. But it's a modified thing set. Come on. I mean, no, it's really not that big of a deal. And I'll tell you why. Because as you start to talk to all these other manufacturers, like from a pay, Ardex, you call them up and you ask them, hey, can I use your stuff over Schluter? Absolutely. We'll warrant it. Most of them are going to say, we're fine with it. We'll take the warranty over for setting the tile over that. Um, you know, it, it is annoying that Schluter came up with that rule and they, they do have a reason for it because they feel that it's not going to dry because you're putting it over a water. So if you put a big, large piece of porcelain tile over a waterproof material, basically in the center of their, their, their argument is in the center of that tile, it's not going to be able to dry, um, because you're in between two basically impervious materials that won't let it dry. But majority of the other thin set manufacturers are stating that they'll they'll warrant it. So Ardex, I know for 100 percent sure they're like, yeah, well, the only thing you won't want to use is um, X77, which I wouldn't do anyways with membranes because it's so expensive. Um, and uh, you know I can't remember the reason for why they didn't want you to use X77 for it, but you really won't want to, and 80 dollars a bag, you're not going to use it anyways. You really want to just get X77 for those mosaic tiles. Um, you know, it's the reason that you would buy that is mainly for to keep the non-sagging quality of it. So if you're doing intricate tile work, it just like it just sticks there and doesn't move. You know, um, but in the pay, yeah, they'll warrant it. So it's really not a big deal. I used to be freaked out about it because I didn't know that when I you know 10, 15 years ago when I was starting to see the stuff and using it. Um, I did everything modified, and then I realized when I went to one of their seminars, they're saying you need to be using unmodified and but I've never had an issue. I've never seen it wet. I've never seen it not dry. Um, so, and it feels much better when, when you hear the other reps say, hey, we're fine with, uh, we'll warrant the, the tile installation over this stuff. So that means it's just not really a big problem. But yeah, that's always been the most confusing thing. And, and I'll probably even get comments on this video about that. And, Okay, whatever, but you know, go ahead and call your uh, other manufacturers and, and they're pretty much going to say it's not a big deal. So, um, but ever since they came out from this or Dietra stuff, man. I definitely stopped. I immediately stopped doing cement board, party backer. Like, I just don't know why you even want to do that anymore. Um, you know, with this stuff, it's just, it's just too easy. So you just want to line it up with the other material here. Cement board is great, still great for penny tile, stuff like that, because Schluter is, um, 
basically saying anything two by two or bigger can be used for this stuff. So like the minimum sized tile would be two by two on this stuff. So, you know, you have to pay attention to that when you're doing the tile work that you're doing. So like if you're doing penny tile, which is really popular these days, um, you know, I would, at that point, that's the only time I'd probably use cement board is for penny tile. Um, and then I just do it with a still, I'd still liquid waterproof over top of that. But that would be the really only reason I would use cement board. Or if I wanted height, you know, if you're having a problem getting this to meet up with your pan, you know, there's no reason you can't just use some quarter inch cement board or half inch cement board to build up this outside floor. But just remember cement board, it's not structural, doesn't help anything out if you're trying to um, build any type of structure. It's just virtually there to raise the height and it's a good, you know, it's a good product to blend tile to, but um, you know, I think with all these different alternatives, there's just really not, not much use for it anymore. Yeah, because now, you know, I'm ready to towel, I'm going to towel this right after lunch, basically. So, um, not that you can't do that with the cement board, but you're, you still have to address the seams, you know, on the cement board and uh, tape it. And, you know, and then if you, you know, like, like I said, you want to waterproof it too. So, you know, you, you can be back a day just because you use cement board. I could be, I won't be able to really towel this till tomorrow if I went that way. Okay, so we'll move back over to the pan and uh, bring my other camera in here. Still recording, that's good. Okay, I'm going to switch my places here. It wasn't really that bad, but I was just indicating that if you had a problem, pull that flange down. Okay, so then the rest of this, fairly straightforward. Um, so you had that package with the... What's the smallest amount you would mix? Third of a bag, quarter of a bag? Uh, I mean, if you have a scale, I would, you know, you can do whatever you want on it, but uh, typically half bags is what I go with just because it's easier to reference. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you get into, uh, that's what's one nice thing about Ardex Thin Set. Most of the time it's just two parts powder, one part uh, water for their mixes. So it makes it really easy to do smaller batches. It's just, just two parts powder, one part. Um, 
that. But yeah, I mean, if you don't have a scale or something like that, I would, I would just use half bags. Those are the sugar all set. And just, man, I always just get white. It just comes better on the camera. Are you gonna run a bead of the curdy set between the, or, oh, shoot. What's that? I can't remember the question because it hides. Oh, are you gonna run a bead of curdy fix between the pan and the deep truck? No, no, it's still gonna be thin set and basically um, I'm gonna be just running this Schluter membrane over the top of the two. And honestly, I might, I usually really do, I, I like to have it more than just a Schluter membrane because this is only five inches wide. I actually like to cut a piece of, uh, a wider piece of membrane. You, you just have to have it overlap the pan by two inches but it is nice to cut like a one foot section of this and just go over the entire, not the entire pan, but you know, span that pretty well. Um, so, but I mean, all intents and purposes, you could just use the curdy band right over that seam and just thin set it. There's no reason to necessarily do curdy fix on that. I mean, that, in a lot of ways, curdy fix would even be better, but then, you know, you're just using a whole tube of that to do that. So this, Mixer, if you're a contractor, really awesome. I highly recommend it. It's made by Cola Mix. It's a really nice mixer. Right? I mean, they're not cheap. I mean, this is like a $500 mixer, but man, this thing's awesome. consistency out of the all set for setting tile definitely mix it the full two minutes wait 10 minutes mix it for another five minutes and then it'll last the longest time so if you mix your thin set properly you'll get the best performance out of it but when it comes to these membranes it's really not that big of a deal um, I'm really primarily saying for setting tile work because a lot of times when you're setting tile it's not like you have everything mapped out and ready to go um, so you might need you know those three hours of time to set your tile. Um, so if you mix it properly, it'll last the longest time possible. So I just use a, I just like to use a drywall pan for this. But basically, just uh, spread it around the corners. And then we're just gonna use that curdy membrane. Now this is a little, a little bit soupier than I, this paper that's probably because I'm not letting it slack in. So I guess take my recommendations for what they are, but don't <laughs> don't brush it like this. Um, so then you want to use your curvy trial, which is just a eighth by eighth inch square notch trial. And then just trial everything to make sure you have a consistent layer of thin set. That's basically what that's for. And then we'll just use Membrane. And all you have to do is just fold this in half. Again, the roll is two inches on any overlap of curry membrane. If you, if you cut your pan wrong or something like that, it's not really that big of a deal. You have all this extra space to fill it in. And if you have some kind of odd size shower, it's also nice because 
you can just fill in the edging with a mud bed mix or something like that to just fill it in and then just use the membrane over top of it. So shooter really does make it pretty versatile. I'm gonna just take a sponge. Doesn't overlapping layers of membrane screw up your tiling? It can. It definitely, it can be problematic in the corners. That's another. So like every one of these systems have their pros and cons. And I, if, if there was one system that I'd say that was the best and just do it on everything, I would. Um, but I don't. There's Every single one of them has their own problems. And that's one of these. That's what this is. I mean, all these corners here, it's just pain in the ass. It just ends up, especially in the corners, it just builds up. Um, so you just have to kind of overcome it with thin set. Um, sometimes when you're doing real intricate tile work, I always just take that grinder uh, blade that I, that I use and grind down the back of the tile to overcome that. But yeah, no doubt. I mean, almost every single corner that you deal with ends up being raised a little bit, and that's just from layering. Because I'm going to layer another one over now, and I'm going to be putting my corners in there. So you have three layers. Yeah, it's, it's annoying. It's definitely not ideal. Um, but, you know, you'll find that even, you know, even the Ouija system is going to have, you know, with the sealant system and stuff is going to have some issues. You're not going to get everything 100% even in the corner. So, you know, and a lot of times, you know, maybe this first top, this first row of tile, I'm going to have to scribe cut it. Because most likely my my tile will taper up a little bit, and I'll just you know I need to get a consistent grout joint at the floor. I'll just have to scribe cut that corner. So it's stuff that takes a little more time to work with, but it's not not a huge deal. Um, but I'm just going to overlap this. But basically, what I'm going to do here is uh, once I get out of the shower, I'm going to run this corner all the way along the drywall, all the way along the entire part of the room, and I think that's just a it's a nice extra piece of insurance to have this membrane up against the corner all the way out. But if you were just at, bare, at the bare minimum of this, I would at least draw this out three feet or get behind the toilet area with this. But uh, yeah, once I do this, I'm gonna I'm gonna overlap it and bring it all the way down that corner. But this is a real critical area. I mean, obviously, these corners of the shower here. And then on the outside of the shower floor, I mean, the shower door should obviously maintain the water inside the area, but it's better, better off to have this well waterproof and not have to even think about it. Okay, so there, let's do this other side first a little bit into those corners. So that right there, I'm, you know, I'm a good three-eighths of an inch gap there. Not the end of the world. I'm just going to keep filling that with thin set. Now, if that was the weedy system, I'd have a problem. You can't just really fill that all up with, with sealant. You know, if, if your board was that far, you'd be basically outside of that dado joint on the weedy system. So, um, this is pretty... Foolproof when it comes to fixing little errors like that. You know, I, got a, I got a vent here I'm not exactly happy with having. Um, I'm actually shrinking this. This was actually a, uh, a full size drain that went all the way down to the floor, and I definitely did not. I wanted to have some waterproofing here in some aspect, so I'm going to just shrink this down to a four inch vent. Um, this this vent actually works so well. It's, it gets becomes like a sauna in here, so it's not going to hurt to reduce that. But having floor vents is a problem. You don't want to have that right outside the shower, so you, you definitely want to try to avoid um, having a full vent down to the floor because that'd be a real easy place for it to leak or have water to come into. And again, I'm going to go on this whole side once I get out in the main room. I'm just going to put the corners here for now. Now, obviously, I'm going to have some base trim 
well, not, yeah, I will have some beige trim out here. So you just want to make sure that you clean, clean your walls well. Okay, so, so this, the drain itself comes with uh, inside corners and outside corners, mainly because they traditionally expect you to have a curb. And I was the one intents and purposes actually going to be, I, I originally had planned to do a curb, but then once I got into the space between where my toilet was and my shower, I was like, I'm going to go curbless because I don't, I don't want to have this extra space coming into the shower, making this even smaller. So the curbless showers really do kind of make the size of the shower feel a little bit bigger. And then you don't, you don't have that defined space either. So. And really, it's not really, it's honestly cheaper. <laughs> to go curbless, believe it or not, I mean, not on a labor standpoint, but on a um, standpoint of, of buying that curb, because you're going to have to buy a curb top, you know, on top of that. That could be 100 bucks, 200 bucks. Um, so eliminating that definitely makes it a little bit nicer. You just have to get a decent shower door system, because that's really what's going to keep the water inside the shower. That's the only thing. I mean, you want to get something that has some kind of uh, how much I say, some kind of channel on that floor uh, versus the stops. But I mean, um, I mean, really any of the, the what I'm going to be installing is a Dreamline shower door system. Just pay attention to it. You, you really want to just have a door, uh, a shower. This is going to be a sliding too because I don't have the room for it. The opening. I mean, you do have the room for the opening, but it just was the client wanted a slider. Um, so you just have to be careful when you're doing a curbless shower. You just want to make sure that your shower system, your shower doors, are going to make sure that that water stays within that space. And a lot of the ones that have it, you know, they're frameless, but they at least have a U channel that comes down and along the floor, and that'll be a better seal than just doing the ones with the uh, the, the glass clamps. So. All right, so then these corners, simple. Just go right here in the corner. This gives you that little bit of build up that you don't really normally want, but there's nothing you can do about it. Um, it will pitch a little bit in the corner because of this. But it's, it's not gonna leak either, so. You know, these corners a lot of times too, is like after, after everything sets up, you might see like a little bit of space between that. And that's where I would just take that curdy fix or get a polyurethane sealant and just, just seal the edges of this. But you won't really know until tomorrow when something comes up. Um, so. So hard, hard part of the current system is just getting that floor, floor height right. But all these newer systems are really making it easy by just removing that plywood on the other side. That's what I was going to say is that I added that quarter inch plywood underneath of my plywood. And that's what allowed me to get this nice flush surface because this was an inch and an eighth thick. Okay. And then... Um, I only took three quarter inch down, so I still had a half, half inch of uh, room there that I need to overcome. So adding that quarter inch and then this eighth inch Ditra got me up to that inch and an eighth. Um, but if you didn't have the ability to put all new plywood on the outside of your floor and raise that quarter inch, you could have just floor leveled the whole bathroom floor to meet up with this. Or you could get a what they call the Ditra mat that's XL. And it's a thicker 
um, basically a thicker mat than this, and that would raise that up, that extra, that extra quarter inch that I needed. So there's a couple ways you can go about it. Um, but I don't know, I mean, most of your outside floors are three quarters of an inch on the outside of your bathroom, so raising it to that quarter inch shouldn't be, not typically isn't a problem. Okay, so then we'll do the most critical area here before we move on, and that is the transition between uh, the pan and the Dietra heat mat. Or I mean, not the Dietra heat, but the regular Dietra mat. So all intents and purposes, I could have, I could just use this uh, membrane here, but it is recommended to go like a foot outside the shower. So I'm just gonna actually just cut this down in half. And then just span this, the two areas. Have you done a Dietra heat that heated the pan too? Yeah, absolutely. I got, I got a video series on that on my channel. Um, that's definitely popular, great idea. Um, you know, because believe it or not, like a lot of people argue about that. Like, why would you put the heated flooring in your shower? As soon as you turn on your shower faucet, it'll get warm. Well, that's not really the case. I mean, you're definitely not going to be warm back here. I mean, your shower head's only going to mainly be right where your body is at. So I definitely, if you're going to reheat the floor on the outside, really do recommend you put it on the inside of the shower too. Um, the only thing about that is that you need a separate cable for the shower to meet Schluter's uh, recommendations on that. You don't want to be just doing one cable for everything. They're just particular about the shower area. They just feel that if something went wrong in there, you just exit that and then you just at least have the outside floor. Um, but honestly, I mean, I'm not sure exactly what could possibly go wrong there. Um, but it does, you know, you have to run the Dietra heat mat into the shower on top of the pan. And then you basically just take a whole sheet of this membrane and after you put the heated wire in, and then you basically encapsulate it with the Schluter membrane. So you're kind of like adding all these layers of waterproofing to achieve that, but definitely a great idea. Check out my video on that because there's a real important detail about um, setting the Schluter Dietra mat in your shower because you need to raise your flange that thickness so that this so that when you have your slope everything's in the proper way. Otherwise, your flange will be too far down and then you're kind of overcoming the Dietra heat mat into your drain. Not a huge deal, but it's better to have it all on like one flat surface so that this membrane sits nice and flush. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely recommend that. I have it in my own shower. I think it's definitely the way to go. So I'm just going to cut this in half. I don't need all this membrane. So, yeah, so this is that transition. And you just really only need it two inches on the pan, but I'm just gonna go this full, full width here. That's a little too much. <laughs> oh well. Glad I could catch the live stream. Yeah. <laughs> you see me? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It'd probably go much longer than I thought it was going to take. Right. Yeah, we're on 80 minutes. 80 minutes? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Everyone who's watching, be sure you try to fast forward some of this stuff so you can get to the point. So I'm not going to lie, this, this thing said is a little wet. I definitely have this mixed a little too much, but it's not, not going to be terrible. 
All right, so then basically this just spans that area. There's really nothing to it. And that'll keep that preventing any water from, you know what? I might just actually just let loop this off the side. It's not gonna hurt to have more waterproofing than less. So we'll just, uh, just go up the side here. Shower door side, probably a little bit better just to have that extra insurance in the corner there. All right, so then what we'll do here, and, and there's no sense in going through the rest of this because it's just really simply just taking this membrane, um, this curtain membrane here, and then just going right up the corner here, going all the way down across the edge of that so um, you know that will make sure that you know everything stays watertight within the bathroom I mean you feel like you know pretty much bulletproof at that point no matter how much water gets spilled or leaked out of an area it's not going to go down in the wall cavity all right now I have to clean up this mess here but if you want to just give one more pan shot of this shower Everyone. All right, so just to recap, um, you know, I did the shooter membrane over drywall on the outside of this wall here. I did use some curdy board for my niche here, and then, then you set the pan. So you do the whole, all the walls first, and then you set your pan. Um, and I always recommend leaving that riser pipe out of your drain and installing it after you get the pan set. It just allows you to be a little bit more accurate with setting that that shower pan and then the rest of it is just like the typical Schluter membranes around the corners and then just putting the Dietrich heat mat or the, the not heat but just a regular Dietrich mat outside and then make sure that you span at least one foot over this transition between the pan and the outside floor and that'll make a really nice waterproof shower system so leave me a comment below a like a share really helps out my channel and uh, I'll be doing more live demonstrations. So yeah, give me that thumbs up. It keeps me motivated to do more. So thanks so much.